back fellow armchair generals this is gamer 1745 here with my continuing playthrough of hearts of iron Rees black ice 11.2 now just looking before starting making the episode at our production we have a few what i'm calling like that one and some of these down here um island defense divisions and that they don't have because these do have um these are infantry divisions purely um, these do have transportation units. These do not. Um, what is the? Oh, anti-tank. Yeah, so these, um, with, along with anti-air, because they're not going to move fast. So they're going to go sit on some of these divisions. And we're looking like we're getting, before the war is going to start, which I'm presuming around December, we're going to have, um, a 41, that is, uh, all of our fortresses done on these small islands out here let's try the place we can i've upgraded now this is historically incorrect they did not fortify these islands um, they didn't fortify midway um, wake island really there were some guns but not what you would call real fortifications there um oh good i know is also watching over on facebook nice or on guam um, the reason they didn't do this is because of um, a treaty that uh, the part of the London Naval Treaty was not to fortify um, these positions. Um, and that included the Japanese, though I don't know how much the Japanese honored that part. Uh, the Japanese kept uh, what was going on in these islands very secret they did not generally speaking allow outsiders into these islands so um, you couldn't commonly move there now there were um, a fair number of people coming through places like wake and midway because they were stops for the um, pan-american flights they would leave i think primarily from san francisco these are the big flying boats stop at hawaii stop at each of these islands to get refueled for the aircraft this is long not sure so much about guam but definitely out here would stop and continue on um, to asia particularly china so um and those were very expensive um, flights. I think, oh, I think getting like near a thousand dollars or something like that to for per passenger, they were expensive. And realize that's more than a price of a car or something. So that they weren't something that common people would just take. And it wasn't common to do global travel either, like, you know, tourism type travel. Um, so, yeah, but still anybody who wanted to could get on an airplane and um, check out Wake and Midway and whatnot. That was a bike accident. Uh, I don't know how many people ride or use phones on bikes. Somebody may what um happened to toy jet all right so we are unhistorically um truly fortifying these islands um, and that included um increasing i believe the fortifications around um manila uh now once you once the um once the war starts in Europe, the London Naval Treaty is just a dead issue. No one's paying attention to it. Everybody building ships larger. Um, obviously, more than you think. Um, well, maybe. Well, I guess you know, with a you know a hands-free earbud thing, sure, I guess. But I don't know. But maybe people are doing it. Maybe you, you Europeans are that nutty that we just do it while we drive cars. I mean, that's easy. 
I don't, but people do. Now, there were fortifications that um, were significant here. Fort Drum, in particular, uh, was here. So, yeah. Um, so we're going to have real... Um, real defenses out in the Pacific. Like I was getting ready to say, it's not necessarily a good thing to garrison an island or something like that, unless you're going to garrison it to a degree that um, you're going to be able to hold it. And, you know, so, you know, don't, because what you're doing is you're just putting more resources, people, of course, but also resources, into a battle that is just going to be lost. So, so those resources, and particularly the people, um, it's just a waste. Now, there is, of course, the idea that, um, If you don't garrison at all, it's just a complete, you know, show up. Because it, midway is literally about like like what we're seeing here. I think that's the the great bulk of the inhabited island here of Midway. Um, the Coral Shoal goes a little bit more around here, but I think that is about it. So we can see that these are not really places to put divisions worth of troops or fortification now we're going to do that but um and so if you just sort of show up if you don't garrison at all people can just sort of show up and take it over um hey kyle good to have you here now johnson island we um have garrison i don't know if if it even had um what is Palmyra. I'm not even sure if it had Johnson Island at the start had this much of a activity um, that we're seeing there, but we are going to we have done some fortification levels so that we can send out forces. So I am planning on um, putting a um, a couple of divisions, or at least a division on each of these islands. All right. So that is down here. I've got to get my head in the game here. Know what I'm playing. Uh, military police. I'm getting more organization to the garrison units. That's nice. Oh, we are a bit ahead. Okay. Um, Let's take a quick look at what's going on in Europe. Okay, so Germany is pushing into Yugoslavia and Italy is pushing into Greece. So what probably happened was Greece sent up, which I've seen this happen in my games when I've been playing, Greece goes to war and to help out Yugoslavia and sends up forces in there, which allows Italy to push in, because Italy is often not prepared to fight there. Okay, airborne assault tactics. Yeah, we'll let that continue. Artillery command and control advance. The Italians have half of Crete. How interesting. Did they have a port on their part? Okay. Artillery unit combined arms and reconnaissance component arms. Stop those that push too far ahead. And now we're going to do this. When 
of course, oh, they've also got Cyprus. Wow, Italy's being aggressive. Wow, if those aren't scripted, that's, that's pretty aggressive there, Italy. Britain's pushing into a rebellious Iraq. We're in a training directory in unit. Oops. Okay. Additional range will be nice for landing craft. Useful, useful, but maybe not highest priority. I would use carrier boot doctrine and trade interdiction that would be good. Watching the crushing of Yugoslavia. Hey, Mr. Duck, how are you doing today? You'd like some metal? Certainly, we have plenty of extra metal. We have lots of coal. A decent amount of extra metal. A decent amount of extra rares and a lot of extra oil. Okay, direct unit fire control. Training or whatever. I get tired of saying. Not descripting all of the versions of doctrines okay battleship you know it'll be important we are planning a naval war this time unlike normal for me playing germany oh i'm doing very good very good the greeks push back a little bit against the italians there cut that little group off Sort of a stalemate out here. Desert unit training. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess we can let that go. Let that continue. The Italians are doing pretty good down here. They've now historically, um, well, they really didn't push at all in. They didn't take um, Port um, Sudan at all, or even get an even attempt to. But they did move in. Their one sort of victory was moved into British um, Somaliland and um, take it with not much of a fight, um, if I remember correctly. I think the British mostly evacuate their forces out to Aden, um, realizing there wasn't very many forces. It wasn't like that there was a, a significant garrison. There was a, you know, a military policing type garrison situation. We are in May 41. So the U.S. is not yet at the war, in, in the war. We're just looking at the European situation. And so the Italians were able to push in and take, take this here. Now, I will use this opportunity. I know I've talked about it before. Um, I'm going to call for the recognition of the country of Somaliland. It is a country that exists right now as I speak, or last I checked. Um, 
that no one officially recognizes. Their closest decent diplomatic relations is with Saudi Arabia. They have their own currency. I don't know who prints it for them. Just so that you know, um, a lot of African nations, um, probably not South Africa. Well, I don't know about South Africa. Yeah, probably not South Africa. But um, a lot of African nations get European countries to print their currency. Um, a, a friend of my dad's um, worked for a number of years in Sierra Leone out here. And um, the government contracted with um, a British printing firm to print up their currency. This was back like in the 80s, the 1980s. And it was shipped out to Sierra Leone. Um, I don't know how well guarded, but in two um, large you know, cargo containers, the currencies for it. One of the cargo containers disappeared. Yes, poof, disappeared. Well, that had all of the high denomination notes in it. Like, let's just, like, I don't know what, what it was, but let's just call them $100 notes, what, whatever the thing was. And it had other, it had some of the other currencies in it, but it was um, yeah, the main, the main um, currency. And Sierra Leone couldn't re readily afford have more printed up not to more replacement currency because they didn't want to do that but um different currency because somebody stole you know um huge amounts of currency so what they did is they made and i'm just calling it i don't know what it was but it was sort of their large denomination something like the equivalent of a hundred dollar note in whatever their currency was was made non-valid meaning it wasn't legal tender even no matter what it said on the the currency. So whoever stole all of this, somebody did steal it. It didn't fall off the ship. Um, wasn't going to get to profit, at least in too huge of a way, um, for this. So for years, um, you know, people had to walk around with large bundle because it isn't worth very much, anyways. Large bundles of currency uh, because their their high denomination note or note were not allowed to to circulate so it was like a, like a twenty dollar bill or whatever the equivalent in local currency which i'm not saying it's worth twenty dollars us but they're sort of equivalent was that and below so people walk around like big fistfuls of of currency just because they couldn't have you know ten one hundred dollar bills that might be worth twenty dollars us or something like that or what you know it wasn't like it's going to be worth you know, hundred dollar bills weren't or whatever. There wasn't going to be worth huge amounts of money, anyways. But yeah, so that's what I learned way back then. I learned, um, oh, interesting, what would have happened if Japan wouldn't have attacked Pearl Harbor? I, hey, Star Streak, how you doing? Um, well, depends on. It. Depends a lot. Would they have also still gone ahead with their attack on Malaya and Dutch East Indies or not, or just not gone after the European powers, which have two different, um, two major different uh, settings there. But so I learned that like much of Africa's currency is not printed by the countries. They're printed, uh, you know, a British firm who also I believe was printing, you know, the British pound and other things printed the currency. So I don't know who who prints today's Somaliland currency, but it has its own currency. It has its own government, um, has its own Wikipedia um, site, and it's well, had been known as British Somaliland. Now, it was um, stuck together with, Sum with Italian Somalia into just Somalia. Yeah. And of course, it has become much of Africa, much of Africa, we would, I would, I would call our failed states. There may be some are struggling to try to exist, but our failed states. Somalia is clearly a failed state. Um, Canada prints. Oh, okay, yes, cool. Yeah, I didn't know Canada did New Zealand's, but I, I knew that Britain was doing a few. I, I, I suspect they weren't doing, Britain wasn't doing South Africa just because of the apartheid 
um, and non non wanting to you know interact with apartheid. So I'm suspecting South Africa did their own. Um, but yeah, so um, it was stuck together and created is Somalia now. Like I say, much of much of Africa is failed states. I'm not suggesting America needs to get involved in all these things, but uh, I just don't know how much to say about this right now because I don't really mean to go into a long, long diatribe. But is it moral to allow? Um, for this state of being, uh, you know, failed states. And a lot of people go, no, 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 we should give them the money and support and whatever. No, the, the pumping support into a failed state doesn't make it a successful state. It isn't that they're sitting there in poverty and if they just had outside support, just, you know, economic justice, they would be doing well. We can look at Rhodesia, for an example. Rhodesia, um, you know, declared its unilateral declaration of independence. Um, and it wasn't exclusively white rule. It was, um, they, they set up several tribal trust lands, which uh, had a certain level of, of internal self-governancy that were sort of major areas of particular African tribes. Because there isn't just one ethnic group, and I, I can't rattle them off right now, in of black locals um, that, you know, agree upon this. Um, it's, uh, and they, um, Mugabe and Nakomo's, and I'm, uh, which one is um, Zapu and Zanla or whatever. Um, they both start with Z's and I get confused. Um, but Nakomo and Mugabe um, were the front man for two different um, leftists, anti-white rule, <laughs> parties, but they were enemies of each other and attacked each other at times, and they rec rec represented two different tribal factions. So, and once Mugabe got in power, he crushes, literally kills lots of, of the Como um, supporters. So, um, so it isn't just, you know, it isn't just black versus white. Uh, and so they set up the tribal trust lands, plus in the Rhodesia part of Rhodesia, if you held and had enough property, and I'm not exactly sure the terms of it, you can vote. So black people who did, now it was very, very few, and it was just a handful of black representatives in parliament, very underrepresented, I'm not going to suggest otherwise. So yes, it was basically white rule, but it wasn't based purely upon race like it was in South Africa. It was based upon property, which was meant to be that you have a stake in it. You know, that was an unsupported state um, that was flourishing uh, for a while. So yeah, um, we can see in Africa, these states, so, you know, is colonialism, well, it's coming back from China, but I don't know that it's gonna be beneficial from China. Um, so back to here. Um, so they get stuck together. And with the collapse of Somalia back if you know in the 90s, and the reason a lot of these nations do finally collapse in Africa is that they are propped up by outside forces, either based primarily in the US or in the Soviet Union. Some are um, like, like Zimbabwe um, is, based, is it was Chinese support. They've been in, in Africa for a long time. Uh, one of the, um, oh, I think um, one of the few Canberra bombers or whatever, the one Rhodesian one that still exists, is in China because they ship it back and it's some sort of, you know, um, war trophy in China. Boy, three, five needs um, to create a better system, simulate U.S. war for getting itself into the war. Yeah, um, we are getting some of that going here.
so um you ha so you have both you know the cold war both sides pumping in um money to and materiel to mainly make a to create what would appear to be and please note my language carefully um national armies that could um enforce government control however good or bad that government um may be governing the people but with the collapse of the soviet union you have russia yeah for a while it still supports as russia places like cuba and whatnot um, because they are such strategical positions and cuba did send lots of things like sugar and whatnot back to uh, uh, russia but you have them unable to afford and to some degree uninterested um, in trying to run a global empire and you have America going, well, hey, we don't need to dump money into the to the African colonies because you no longer have the threat of, of the Soviet Union taking over. So we don't need to continue to prop up these local militaries. So there's a huge cutback. And because there's the cutback, the country the, the countries collapse because their military collapses, their enforcement. So you get the whole Somalia thing that happens. And also there's famine and other reasons that happen. Well, during that period, um, Somalia breaks up, and it's still broken up today into three countries. You have Somaliland up here, out here. I'm not exactly sure where, but sort of out here is called Puntland, which is a failed state. That's where all the the that's where let, let me say most of the pirates that are um, uh, operating uh, against the shipping out here, and it's still ha still happening. If you don't realize, this isn't making the news anymore. Um, but they would always bring the, the ships into the port here, um, not really much of a port, um, in Puntland to wait for the um, ransom to be paid. And then you have um, Somalia down here, which is also a failed state. But if these peoples have similar cultures and languages, this is the one state that is least failed, shall we say. I don't know if it's a success, but now I attribute it to being um, British ruled versus Italian ruled in the colonial era. It could be other ge geographical reasons. I'm not sure. Plutocracy, yeah, some people want plutocracy back. Well, I'm not saying plutocracy. Um, but it used to be in America, in some states, you had to have a certain amount of property to vote. Um, and it's meant to be that it's not the rich or the wealthy it is, is seen because it wasn't in America very much. Um, and everyone's vote was equal once, once you got to vote. Um, it wasn't very much property. But it was enough that you had a stake in society to to choose who the govern government is going to be. Luckily for the rich, poor typically vote for rich because they are thinking rich is rich. Well, they vote for the Democrats in America, which is the party of the rich. Republicans have never been the party of the rich. Republicans have always been the party of the middle class. Sure, there's rich Republicans, but there's... If you look at the Democrats, you know, the whole South was Democrat. And that the South, of course, was a, you know, a, I don't know how much of a plutocracy, but it, you know, um, uh, it was very paternalistic, the way, much more so than the, the, the North, the sort of hierarchy, the plantation system. Um, the agricultural system, and there were small farmers in the South proper, there with or without slaves, you know, as in like, oh, hey, you know, a small farm might have two or three slaves, might, I say, um, or it might not in the South. Um, there were a lot of poor farmers like that. But the overwhelming majority, not of people, but of agriculture was going on in large-scale agriculture in the South. So it, it's a it's a bit different, and you know, so the Democrats have always sort of been the party of the rich that patronizes the um, poor. So um, you know, 
it just depends on how you want to figure that out um so yeah they tend to do so yeah ideology is an interesting thing here but um so yeah somaliland um was the one italian success in conquering um here but we see them moving up into here which there is a um a hard stop limit down here to keep stuff if you allow the ai to um have a connection between sort of sudan and um egypt up here you'll just get all of these forces withdrawn up into egypt so they've done a hard stop so right now supply into khartoum here if it can happen has to come down through here so italy does have a chance to do that so okay let's continue enough of me talking about failed africa africa is failed And I really, quite honestly, don't know how much. Don't, I, I guess we, we have to put it as politicians because I just, people can only pay attention to so much um, international affairs and international situations because they've got their lives to, to deal with. And if their life isn't, revolving around you know things globally they you know what do the people in montana care about what's going on in burma you know um or their what their government is doing in burma so i don't necessarily um blame the um you know blame blame that on the people for for voting for politicians who um Okay, I guess that's just moving it to 1940, so, right. Oh, no, it's 41 here. Okay, yeah. Um, we can blame them for not paying attention to other gasoline engines here now, other things in, that their politicians do, and they still vote for things, vote for politicians who who don't do well running their their responsibilities, shall we say. Um, but I'm not going to blame the average voter on um, the peripheral um, sort of side issues here. Oh, yeah, yeah we want to do this. Get both of those going. And we're going to So I, I don't know how much it's ideology is. Oh, they put that back to, no, nope, it's still at war here. Okay. Is, is keeping things going in the wrong direction. Supplies from the Netherlands. I'm sorry, I want to support the Netherlands, but I don't really want to do that big of a support. I think it's maybe seeing that we need supplies compared to our current. Um, okay, well. Down.
Germany has surrounded, once they take Ser or, um, Belgrade, um, Yugoslavia will collapse, and they're pushing into, the Italians are pushing their rare materials, sure, we can have rare materials. Okay, we're going to do a party rally. Yay for the party. Gold mining. We can have metal on. Okay, Division HQ. Okay, so Division HQs, here we go. Um, we could let it go, but we don't need to at the moment so much. We're not going to do any more. No, those we will. It's these we're not going to do any more of. Um, right now, we're going to just work on increasing our reduction of supplies. Okay, so Yugoslavia has been annexed by Germany. A couple of Greek units got trapped back in there, I see. Will they form the Serbian Croatia? I don't know. Like I say, I, it's been a long time since I played um, as Britain or one of the allies, and I've never played as America before, so we're seeing what some of this is going to happen here. Okay, unlimited national emergency. Here, here are some of our modifiers to get. We might have issued a proclamation that an unlimited national emergency exists and requires the strengthening of our defense to the extreme limit of our national power and authority. Does that sound a lot like what Biden is doing in America right now? Um, he has used um, this, those sort of um, powers uh, for the baby food form formula in America, which... There's a little bit of a um, concern. I don't think that would be anything of it, that nature, but I don't know. Okay, so now we are fully in production here, which is a good thing. that I don't want to be, but I do want to get some of the reinforcements and whatnot. Keep going. It's sort of proper too, who Okay, you can have copper.
Who get that and then I'll free up. Oh, those are coming soon. Submarine AA. Okay, so let's stop that. We've got our are increasing. We really don't need oil refining. We are more than enough oil, I think, in production rate. Now I've not built just because of I probably overbuilt then historically, but um I don't know if I've overbuilt then useful um the navy up. Okay, let's yeah, let's start looking into uh, better aircraft. Surplus and armor unit connect. I'm going to see Barbarossa anytime soon here, May, June, hmm, what, what did we just do, what was that, oh, oh Cuba, never mind. Little sort of pop-up thingy here, okay, well. Well, I think we're going to end the episode here, not the live stream. Everyone who's watching live, we just hang loose. We will be um, back. And I, but I want to thank everyone um, who's made it this far to the end. Um, really do appreciate you guys watching. Hope you guys are um, giving the thumbs up. It, that really does help. And of course, what very much also helps is just just post, say hi. I like to know who's who's out there watching. It's really cool. Um, it helps with the algorithm. So. Thanks so much. See you next time for, yes, more, even more Hearts of Iron.